we're going to move on now. We're going to go to our tech corner because we're, we're, we're as, as always, going through the, the show quickly. This is a tech corner where, which we love doing. We have a guest in the studio with us today. Um, it is uh, from Olympus. It's their DSX Opto Digital Microscope. And Dirk and Rob Bellinger of Olympus are going to show it to you right now. Well, thanks, Mike. Yep, I'm here with uh, Rob Bellinger nice from uh, Olympus, and we're going to look at the DSX uh, 100, right? Yes, that's correct. This is our uh, Opto Digital Microscope, um, one of the members of the family. This is the 100 model. There's a 500 and a 500i. The 100 model is specifically for a little lower mag range. This tool can go down to 5x, all the way up to a little about 450x. The um, system is meant for a little bulkier, larger samples, like a circuit boards, uh, medical device components like valves or circuitry for medical devices. And, and this seems to be mostly the market is uh, circuit boards and, and medical devices? Well, it has a broader range than that. Anything where you need a little lower mag, a little more working distance on a part, but still want to render high quality surface images at decent magnification, you know, 500 or below. And you also want to take metallurgical measurements on the surface. So I'll cover a little about the tool. The, uh, the interface, like you mentioned earlier, is simplified interface, meant for uh, anybody to walk up and kind of use the tool. And, and it seems so. consistent throughout this line, right? Is, I mean, the interface That's really correct. was intended to be something where it's fairly self-evident how it works. That's correct. And in, in this, this line, the Opto Digital Microscopes, the, all the interfaces look the same. They have even tutorial modes where you can walk up and it'll guide an operator through the use of the tool and with instruction windows, and they can get their images quickly and easily that way. Or even in the advanced mode, it's still very easy interface, um, big large buttons, uh, all touch screen interface here. Great for interacting interac uh, interaction to the screen, but also to break up the, the interaction constantly being on the mouse and her helps for ergonomics. Okay. So the, uh, the microscope itself is an imaging tool. We have bright field, we can do transmitted light imaging. But this unique, uh, this tool is a little unique because we also have the ability to do free angle imaging okay. with the stand. And um, if you want to show that now, I have a oh, live sure. image on. You if showed you can me how to do this earlier, yeah. so I just loosen this knob, right? That's okay. correct. And you can tip it off to the side. So you can see underneath pads like this if it's important to see, you know, the solder uh, okay, line so we underneath can, we the can pad. see here I'm actually looking underneath. Yep. Tipping at an angle. So I can see completely underneath that, or I can come around to the other you can side. Come right? around to the other side, and you can see the solder. This is what, 45 connection. degrees each way? 45 degree angles, okay. and we're capable of, you know, angling at that uh, range. You can mag in and do, uh, you know, image captures and all that kind of stuff. Okay. The uh, interface for uh, free angle is just a simple button push. We also have in unique lighting options on this. Uh, this tool uses a ring light LED source. We can cr con, um, control the quadrant lighting, so we can get rid of some reflections off the surface. We can even rotate the lighting around. Some of the other adjustments in image processing, we have you know, an anti-halation called wider. This is wide dynamic range. So you can see on the metal surface such as this, you have a lot of reflection coming off the lighting. So the wide dynamic range can cut that reflection down and bring up the contrast around the outer surfaces. Okay. So similar to high dynamic range, but a little bit faster refresh rate. You can see the refresh rate isn't compromised on your image. So a high, dyna so. high dynamic range is where it takes multiple images correct. at different, uh, different lighting levels, is that? That's correct. Okay. So a high dynamic range will actually take several images of exposure ranges and integrate them together. Uh, this system actually does it in a live mode we can turn turn that on now and you can see that it does similar effects to the wide dynamic range but it gives you a little more texture but there's a little bit of a lag on the image not too bad though okay. considering it's doing all of that processing on the fly um, we also have just the straight contrast mode where it brings the contrast off the surface if you turn this off, you know, normal microscope image would be like this. And I, I understand also you have a way to, so. to show a whole bunch of different lighting conditions and just pick the one that's best? That's that? correct. So the ease of use, again, if an operator doesn't want to have to deal with testing all these image processings out to find what works best, we have best image function. Oh. With this, you select what you're looking at, like a defects on the sample, and the microscope will go through the process of capturing the images at all the different lighting techniques, lighting image uh, angles. 
Um, so you can look through here, we have bright field, different segments of the LED. We have just straight bright field, bright field with wider, bright field with HDR. So you can get a quick image. You don't have to go through and check And then this is one. just a touch screen, so you would just select you the one select that you want. Select the one you okay. want and hit apply, and the microscope sets up all those settings for okay. you. Above that, you know, being low mag, you get a good field of view, but if you want to go larger fields of view, this tool has great stitching capabilities. So we can do a quick live panorama stitch, and if I hit acquire here, this is a manual stage. We do have a motorized stage option as well, but even with the manual stage, you can quickly move the stage to the side, and the software is going to stitch this all together for us. Okay, so as we see on our, on our gauge cam here, is as you're as you're moving the stage. So it's actually capturing the image and, and stitching these stitching together. Stitching them together on the fly so as you, I'm moving So you could the capture stage. the entire piece if you wanted just by moving the stage. If I want to spend a little bit of time, I can move the stage over this entire part and capture an entire image. And if you had a motorized so, stage, this could be uh, 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 This could be done with the joystick or the motorized stage. You could actually touch and move the, the field of view with your finger and oh, it okay. drives and stitches it together for you. The nice thing about this, you can use this image now if I hit complete. I can also use this image as a map image, so low mag view to see where we're at in the, as a map image in the software. But if I hit complete now, you're going to see our entire stitched image brought back out as a complete image view. So you can get large fields of view quickly. And what's nice about this is they're still calibrated. You can go in and do all your measurements. And can you, can you do 3D measurements as well? Great question. So if we go back to our live image, let me move to a, an area that has some dimensions to this. So being an opto-digital microscope, we're not limited at this magnification. We don't have to reach over and turn knobs on the microscope or anything. It's an opto-digital zoom. So we can mag into a location such as this. And if we're looking at this, we'll see some in-focus data and some out-of-focus data. So three-dimensional imaging is required for something like this. We can select 3D on the screen here. And all we really have to do is set our range of focus. So it's all motorized control. With the microscope, I'll move to the very low point of focus. Once I reach my very bottom of focus and even just slightly past it, I just hit the start button over here. And then I can move to the top of focus, which is to be the top of this little chip here. And we hit in. And once we have the parameter set, that's really it. You hit acquire 3D and it's going to go through and build the three-dimensional image for us. Now while it's doing that, could you also, could you do 3D and stitching? Yes, you can, especially with the motorized stage, then you could even set up a large ray of stitch area and set your top and bottom of focus range, and it could go through and stitch together all of it automatically for you. Okay. The manual stage is still possible. You just have to move it to the next position and then let it stitch through the Z range, okay. and then it would create an all in focused image for you. So once it's done and complete with the three dimensional uh, scan, you can see we have an all in focused image. You can see the low point and the high point, which is nice. Well, what are you going to do with an image after this? You're going to want to take measurements on it, correct? So we'll go to a measurement tab. Real simple workflow across yeah, the I top of the screen. Yeah, I noticed. there's your, yeah. so you got imaging is your first step, basically measurements, your next step, and, and reports. And create reports okay, at right. the end. So now that we look at this, we can see there's a profile line on the screen here, this red line. The profile line is showing us the height data across the line of the sample. But we want to see it in 3D. We can hit a 3D button, render the image in three dimensions. Everything on the screen is you know, touch screen for adjustments where you can see where you're actually taking this line profile across the sample. We can zoom in as well. This data, say you wanted to measure the height from the top of the solder joint down to the base point where it was, you get the information right down here. We have height, length, angles. We can export this to a data sheet. These data sheets can be exported out to Excel quickly and easily, but more than that, once you have the data, you just hit reports. Okay. So. Real quick to cover some of the other measurement functions. Profile measurements, this is for the three-dimensional. You can measure heights, lengths between points of heights. We also have geometric measurements, so measuring from center of circles to center of circles or in between two line patterns or crossing line patterns. We can also measure volume on the surface. So something that comes off the surface or void in the surface, if you want to know how much volume was removed or how much volume was piled over on the surface area, this software can do that, gathering the 3D data. Caliper measurements is a, a built-in tool for measuring line patterns, like 10 points across the line and averaging out those oh, okay. yeah, sure. numbers. We also have particle measurement built into the software. So once we have our measurements and all the data, we want to create a report. Simple button press creates the reports for us in our built-in template. 
This template is modified to the customer's use, however they want it to look. We have our image, our line profile showing here, the measurement that we actually took on the line profile. What's nice is you can keep creating new pages and say we want that big 3D image in our report as well. You just mark the area and tell it you want the 3D image. Maybe we want it when the height color shaded. We tell it OK. Now right in our report we have the three-dimensional oh, image okay. that's rotatable. We can zoom in and out, pan it around, get it the way we want it to look. Once we have it the way we want, our report is complete. We just export the report as a PDF file. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm assuming also bugs. data can be export. Uh, data itself can be exported for use of uh, data analysis. That's that sort of thing. Data analysis can be exported um, once we go back here to the data sheet. If you have a bunch of data points, you can export that right to Excel. It's probably the quickest and easiest sure, way. Okay. Um, we can also do gauge R and R studies built into the software, oh, so okay. you can do repeatability measurements between operators, standardized measurements. So GR and R is built in. We um, you know, measurements is a big part of this. It's a metrology tool. So measurement uh, reliability is important. So the software also has a built-in auto calibration feature. We don't have time to show that today, but it has that system comes with a standard you put on the stand and the software does all of its own calibration. Mm -hmm. And that can be done as a check anytime the customer wants. And uh, D the DSX100 is what is the, the first, uh, the smallest in the line, is that? Well, it's just the lowest mag range in lowest the line. Mag yeah, range. the okay. 500 okay. and the 500i are the compound type microscopes. Okay. That they go and up to sa same thousand interface. times. Mag same range. interface basically on all of them. Exact uh, same software interface. Software, okay. Yeah, so it's uh, ease of use is all there, same interface that way. Um, different stand, different lighting techniques on the other scopes. Okay. Well, Rob, this is the, again, this is the DSX100 digital optical microscope. Do I have o that right? Opto digital microscope. Opto <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two of the words, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, Rob, thanks for yeah, uh, coming Thank you by for the time. Appreciate us, right? it. Thanks. Have a good day. Yeah. All right, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Dirk, for doing that great tech corner. Uh, Olympus is uh, opto digital microscope, as Dirk and Rob said. Uh, the DSX 100, uh, really good, really good tech corner there, Dirk. And you're back.